cancer, even more rare disease, thymic malignancies, that's um, a rare cancer we don't see on an everyday basis, at least on our tumor board. So we're very happy to have Nicolas Girard here, who has a tremendous experience on um, thymic malignancies. Thank you very much for giving us an overview how to approach this rare tumor from a multimodal perspective. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, so today I will focus on the multimodal approach of uh, thymic uh, tumors, so focusing on uh, locally advanced uh, uh, tumors. The incidence of uh, thymic tumors is very low. Uh, thymic malignancies are very rare tumors. In France, the incidence is only 250 uh, new cases. Despite the, the rarity of the disease, we were able, thanks to the support of the ESMO Guidelines Committee, to put together some uh, clinical practice guidelines covering all the aspects of the management of, uh, of the disease. I have to mention, I don't know if uh, our Chinese colleagues are, are still here, but uh, they are very active uh, in this field because the incidence of thymomas is uh, uh, higher in uh, East Asia than in Europe. And they publish some, some guidelines. They have a, a retrospective and prospective database, uh, multi-institutional collaborations through uh, an organization that is called CHART, Chinese Alliance for Research on uh, Thymomas. So here is a case of a 65-year-old woman. She was a never smoker, a history of lupus associated with uh, arthralgia. Uh, she was treated with, with uh, hydroxychloroquine. And in 2011, she uh, reported uh, progressive fatigue, cough, and, and dyspnea with a CT scan, uh, as you can see, uh, showing a, a mediastinal, uh, anterior mediastinal mass, necrotic, and invasive of the uh, mediastinal structures, the uh, superior vena cava, the great vessels, and, uh, and the pericardium. So, our putative diagnosis in this situation was that of a, of a thymic tumor. Well, the, as you know, the, the diagnosis of uh, mediastinal tumors may be challenging because we have several entities among uh, primary mediastinal tumors, germ cell tumors, benign or malignant, and obviously uh, lymphomas. And the CT scan aspects may be, uh, may be similar among those uh, entities. We have to make the differential diagnosis uh, with lung cancer, and the majority of patients with primary mediastinal tumors are never smokers and, and young uh, uh, people. We have some clinical signs that may uh, uh, help to have a, a, a putative diagnosis, uh, B signs in lymphomas, uh, gynecomastia in uh, choriocarcinoma, uh, this, this kind of uh, well-known uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, in association with uh, thymic tumors, we may have autoimmune disorders, uh, which are observed in about 30% of patients, the most frequent being myasthenia gravis, red cell aplasia, and hypogamma globulinemia. So we do a systematic screening for those autoimmune disorders in all patients with uh, 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 a mass in the anterior mediastinum. This is a recommendation of the ESMO guidelines. Still, we, we need to have another level of discussion because even in patients with a mediastinal mass in the anterior mediastinum, uh, it may be thymic tumor, but it may be also thymic hyperplasia. And uh, thymic hyperplasia is, is frequent. It may be associated with autoimmune disorders, with myasthenia gravis, uh, with uh, uh, specific conditions such as infection, uh, treatment with corticosteroids or hormonotherapy. So usually the diagnosis is easy at CT scan when you have a, 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 a small mass in the anterior mediastinum uh, maintaining the, the shape of the normal thymus. But sometimes hyperplasia may, may be larger. Uh, one point is that hyperplasia uh, shows uh, hypermetabolism at uh, CT scan. And so the uh, uh, what we do to make the distinction between a thymic tumor and thymic hyperplasia is MRI using contrast phase uh, uh, sequences. As you can see uh, on the uh, opposed phase uh, images, you have a decrease in the signal uh, that is uh, observed that is related to the fatty component of the hyperplasia and which is not observed in, uh, in thymic uh, tumors. 
When you have a patient with a mediastinal uh, mass, in some situations a biopsy may not be uh, required. This is the case for resectable tumors, resectable thymic uh, tumors, uh, mass uh, with uh, uh, heterogeneity uh, uh, for, for which uh, a diagnosis of teratoma uh, is, uh, is expected, or also uh, cystic uh, lesions. We have some rare cases of uh, patients with uh, 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 malignant germ cell tumor with uh, compression of uh, mediastinal uh, structures for whom uh, emergency chemotherapy may be uh, delivered based on elevated biomarker, but this is a very rare situation. In all other cases, a biopsy is, uh, is needed. Still, the histopathologic classification of thymic tumors is complex, uh, you have carcinomas, uh, thymic carcinomas are mostly of squamous cell histology, they are very similar to uh, lung cancer, and you have thymomas combining epithelial tumor cells with lymphocytes with an increasing degree of atypia from type A to type uh, B3. It is challenging classification because you have some heterogeneity, some continuum among uh, each thymoma entities, so um, clearly pathological uh, review is, uh, is really helpful to uh, uh, have a, an accurate diagnosis. This is a, a series of 300 uh, cases that we uh, enrolled in uh, our French uh, network. And you can see that about one third of the diagnosis uh, had uh, some disagreement between the initial pathological assessment and the pathological review. In 7% of uh, patients, this uh, led to a change in the therapeutic uh, strategy. So back to uh, our patient, the tumor was considered not resectable given the invasion of the mediastinum. A surgical biopsy was performed showing a type B3 uh, thymoma. Clearly, in, in, uh, in thymic tumors, resectability clearly defines uh, the strategy of the treatment because this is the most uh, significant prognostic factor. Clearly, this is uh, uh, the, the variables that define two distinct uh, 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 groups of, uh, of patients. How to define resectability is an issue, obviously. Uh, we have a new staging system, TNM-based staging system that is uh, now being uh, implemented, replacing the Masaoka Koga uh, system. The point in this uh, TNM-based uh, classification is that Invasive tumors, stage 3 tumors, are uh, subdivided similar to what we have in lung cancer, distinguishing stage 3a tumor associated with invasion of resectable structures as opposed to stage uh, 3b tumors uh, invading uh, non-resectable uh, uh, structures. We have a correlation between histology and stage in thymic tumors, so uh, invasive tumors are usually of type B3 thymoma histology or uh, corresponds to uh, thymic carcinoma. And this is true with the Masaoka Koga st staging, but also with the TNM staging. In the setting of non-resectable tumor, so first step is to do a tissue biopsy. Several ways to do this uh, 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 pretreatment biopsy. Clearly, uh, biopsy is far better than cytology. It's very hard to make a diagnosis of thymic tumor or even mediastinal tumor based on cytology. So we do percutaneous biopsy, and I prefer surgical biopsies because the diagnosis may be uh, challenging from a pathological uh, standpoint. First step for the treatment of those patients is primary chemotherapy. Uh, we systematically discuss the management of thymic tumors uh, in France in, uh, within a, a network that was uh, 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 recognized by the French NCI. Uh, this network is called Rhythmic. We have 14 centers, uh, two expert centers in Paris at uh, Gustave Roussy uh, with Benjamin Bess and myself in, uh, in Lyon University uh, Hospital. We have a single national tumor board to discuss the management of all patients. 
uh, we use a web uh, conferencing system to share uh, patient images and uh, pathological uh, reports and discuss the management of uh, patients based on systematic uh, pathological review and the guidelines, which are the ESMO uh, guidelines. We also have a, a prospective database of all patients discussed at the, the National Tumor Board. Uh, from 2012 to 2015, uh, 1,000 patients have been discussed at this tumor board uh, all along the management of the, of the disease. Uh, if we focus on uh, patients with locally advanced uh, disease, uh, we have data for uh, 91 uh, patients receiving primary uh, chemotherapy. It was mostly CAP. Uh, for 76% uh, of patients, and this is because we recommend CAP in the guidelines, so uh, this is pretty uh, uh, expected. So our patient uh, received uh, uh, four cycles of uh, CAP as an induction uh, treatment. Uh, from the data we have uh, in Rhythmic, the response rate is very high in this situation of induction chemotherapy. Uh, nearly 80% response rate, which is what had been reported previously in the literature, but uh, we did not expect to, to have a such uh, high uh, response rate. Uh, so this was the case of, uh, of the patient uh, uh, here, uh, with a, a major response uh, 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 of the mediastinal mass. In this setting, we rediscuss uh, resectability, and surgery is feasible in about uh, half of the patient initially considered as uh, having a non-resectable tumor. In the setting of invasive uh, lesions, clearly median sternotomy is the approach uh, to have an unblocked resection of the tumor, the thymus, and all uh, involved uh, structures. We also recommend mediastinal node uh, sampling, and frozen sections are, are very hard to interpret, so uh, this is not recommended for uh, margin assessment uh, because of the difficulty of distinguishing the tumor and the normal thymus. We use a mediastinal board to have a, an accurate orientation and marking of the surgical specimen. This ensures a good, a good communication between the surgeon and the pathologist. Minimally invasive surgery uh, is being used more and more. Here we have some, uh, some data from an international uh, uh, multi-institutional uh, group, uh, but I don't think that in the setting of uh, invasive large tumor, this is a, a good uh, uh, approach, but we can discuss. Uh, I think minimally invasive surgery may be reserved to smaller tumors without uh, uh, vascular invasion. For the patient, after the four cycles of CAP, uh, we went for surgery, so median sternotomy. It was invasive tumor. We had to uh, do a resection of uh, uh, a brachiocephalic vein, uh, wedge resection of the lung, uh, and a partial resection of the pericardium. It was thymomab 3 as expected, complete resection, and the stage was uh, a stage 3, according to Masaoka Koga. What are the recurrence rates? In this situation, well, they are pretty high. About 30% uh, of patients will have a recurrence after such management, induction chemotherapy followed by surgery. We have to keep in mind that the majority of recurrences will occur not in the mediastinum, but in the pleura. Still, we have some data showing the uh, uh, efficacy of uh, post-operative radiotherapy to the mediastinum in patients with stage 3 uh, thymomas, even after complete resection. Here are the data from uh, the ITMIC retrospective database. And in the ESMO recommendation, we clearly uh, uh, recommend post-operative radiotherapy in this situation of advanced tumor treated with induction chemo followed by surgery. So the patient had uh, post-operative radiotherapy, 56 grays, uh, no post-operative chemotherapy. There is no data about post-operative radiotherapy, uh, chemotherapy in, uh, in time omas. And she had a follow-up. She presented with uh, uh, recurrence in the pleura, uh, one year after the initial uh, uh, episode. Here you have a pleural implant of the right mediastinal pleura. So, in the setting of thymoma recurrence, you have to, again, apply the same uh, strategy. 
first discuss resectability and then, if not resectable, do uh, uh, chemotherapy. Clearly, surgery for recurrence uh, has been demonstrated to provide a, a better outcome for the patient. A complete re-resection uh, is associated with uh, prolonged survival as compared to patients who are not operated on at the time of recurrence or uh, who have an incomplete resection. So we did a right thoracotomy with a resection of the, of the lesion. Again, it was, it was type B3, thymoma, the resection was complete. And the patient presented with uh, multiple episodes uh, of recurrences, uh, two years after initial uh, management. Uh, here you have uh, uh, one implant, here you have another one. And uh, we did uh, a resection of those lesions followed by intrapleural chemohyperthermia, which is a kind of innovative approach. Uh, we have uh, limited data in the literature and clearly this is something that we assess uh, in my group. Again, it was a type B3 thymoma. In 2015, again, uh, uh, recurrence in the left, uh, in the left uh, pleura, resection of the lesion, uh, need for resection of the, of the fifth rib. And at the end, uh, uh, one year ago, in October 2015, we had again multiple implants in the left pleura. And at, the, at that time, clearly the patient had multiple surgeries. She had chemohyperthermia uh, on the left pleura. And so uh, clearly surgical resection was considered not uh, feasible. And we uh, discussed uh, systemic treatment. So this is uh, the situation of systemic treatment for recurrence. Uh, within Rhythmic, we have several patients who, who, who were analyzed uh, for, uh, for the efficacy of uh, uh, systemic treatment for recurrence. You can see that uh, multiple regimens are used, carboplatin paclitaxel, etoposide, CAP for patients who did not receive CAP initially. We have also uh, uh, um, some phase two trials that show the efficacy of targeted agents such as sunitinib or everolimus, and some patient uh, received uh, in the late lines of treatment uh, this kind of, uh, of targeted approaches. Here the, the objective is not response because you can see that the response rates are very low and this is for the majority of patients, stabilization of the disease, but still we have about half of the patient who will have, uh, in the setting of recurrence not amenable to focal treatment, uh, uh, disease control. The PFS in this situation of recurrence ranges from six to seven months. We have a good correlation between response and, uh, and PFS in this situation. So this is what we did for, for the patient. Chemotherapy with carboplatin and, and paclitaxel. We had an objective response after four cycles, but a rapid reprogression. And we initiated uh, uh, one month ago, Pemetrexed as a third line uh, uh, treatment. Can we do better? For sure. Uh, we need to know more about the biology of uh, thymic tumors. It's a complex biology. We do not have a single molecular driver. Ex uh, with the exception of some thymic carcinomas with uh, KIT activating mutations, but it's very rare. Um, what is common between thymoma and thymic carcinomas is the deregulation of uh, uh, cell death, so apoptosis mechanism, and cell cycle uh, deregulation is also reported both in thymomas and thymic carcinomas. We have some data with uh, 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 new compounds such as histone desacetylase inhibitors, such as cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors, but this is not precision medicine because the patients are not selected based on an alteration that is seen in the tumor. So very hard to interpret those, uh, those data. Last thing is the issue of uh, immunotherapy. Immunotherapy uh, is becoming a, a standard in, uh, in multiple uh, solid tumors. Here in thymoma, we have the issue of autoimmune disorders, obviously, but in thymic carcinoma, uh, which are of squamous uh, cell histology, clearly immunotherapy may be considered. We have a high level of expression of PDL1. We have some preliminary data with pembrolizumab. Uh, data of a phase two uh, trial reported at the ASCO meeting 
24 percent response rate, so very similar to what we have in uh, lung cancer, but still, we, even if it's thymic carcinoma, we have a high rate of toxicities, myocarditis, uh, Lyell syndrome, so clearly, uh, for now, it's, uh, it's clinical trial and not uh, routine uh, practice. We have also some interesting data with Avelumab, an anti-PD-L1 inhibitor. You can see that out of seven patients with thymoma, you have three patients who had a major response after two injections of Avelumab. Uh, with the support of uh, EORTC and ETOP, uh, we are now developing the Nivo team trial, so Nivolumab, in refractory type B3 thymomas and thymic carcinomas. My copy I is uh, Solange Peters, and we have a, a, a primary endpoint of PFS at six months and a strong uh, biomarker study associated with this trial. I thank you for your attention.